<clears throat> okay, so we have here your hematopoiesis. So hematopoiesis came from the words hema, which means blood, and poesis, which means making or production. So we speak about the hematopoiesis, just the process of your blood cell production, formation, and eventually differentiation to become mature blood cells found in our peripheral circulation. If you have your immature cells, so much immature cells here or the young cells that are being produced in your bone marrow. So once they mature, they are being released to your peripheral circulation. So the entire process from your production of your uh, cells here from your bone marrow until it become here the mature cells and then this, until it being released to your peripheral circulation, circulating your blood circulation, that entire process we call it one as your hematopoiesis. So we have here your spinaca parent cell here, which all your blood cells arises from, which could be found in your bone marrow. You call it one as your multipotential stem cells. It's a multipotential stem cells here because again, it would have the capacity um, to differentiate to the different cell types. Other name of your multipotential stem cells, your pluripotent stem cells. Other author try to refer this multipotential stem cells or your pluripotential stem cells to the following. Hemocytoblast, hemohistoblast, hemohistocyte, and we have also your lymphoidocytes. All of this one, mga other name lang ito, uh, being referred by some authors of the other references. Okay, now we go to the three stages of your blood cell production or your hematopoiesis. For the first one, we have your mesoblastic phase, also called here as your megaloblastic phase. In this phase, the yolk sac become here the first site of your blood cell production. However, the cells here being produced only by your yolk sac is only limited for your RBC production. Hindi pa na produce dito ang mga other cell types. Again, it's just only limited for your RBC production. So start here on the second week of your gestation and try to process here the blood cell production within 8 to 12 weeks, age of gestation. Okay, so here in this stage, it's just only limited for your RBC production, limited only also as well here with the production of your embryonic hemoglobin. So the word hemoglobin here came from two na substance or molecules here in order for that to become your hemoglobin. We have your hem and we have also your globin. So we have, we're going to discuss kung paano ito nagawa. We have a topic on that. We have your iba ito. We have your hem synthesis. We have also your globin. Magkocombine sila that become your hemoglobin. As with the differentiation of your embryonic hemoglobin, they are differentiated here by their globin structure or their protein component. Your hemoglobin is made up of four globin. It's a tetramer, may to say apat, but that one is a dimer or two pairs. Apat lahat but two pairs. May to say pareho, dalawang globin na pareho, okay, then dalawang ganon. I'm making that one as four. So, these are your embryonic hemoglobin. We have your Gower 1. The Gower 1 here is made up, the globin component is made up of 2 zeta and 2 epsilon. Your Portland, on the other hand, is made up of 2 zeta and 2 gamma globin chain. And your Gower 2, on the other hand, is made up 2 alpha and 2 epsilon na globin chain. Okay, the next phase of your hematopoiesis, we have here your hepatic phase. So, hepatic phase here, so the liver become the uh, chief site of the blood cell production on starting on the second month of the pregnancy. But only that one is just limited to your RBC production. Then, another one, the spleen also contribute with your blood cell production starting on with the erythropoiesis first with your RBC production starting on the 1st to the 5th month of the pregnancy, followed here by myelopoiesis. 
Myelo Poes is the production of your myeloid cells. This includes your granulocytes. Again, your granulocytes, you may mga granules natin, includes your neutrophil, your basophil, and your eosinophil. Then also limited also here with the platelet production and your monocyte production. Though those are these are this cells belongs to you. This cells belongs to your myeloid cell lines. Then we have here followed by the lymphopoiesis with the production of your lymphocyte starting the fourth month and even after the delivery, you're still producing the spin still produces here your lymphocytes. Okay, so here in the stage, so it differ with your me megaloblastic stage or your mesoblastic stage because again, in the mesoblastic stage, it's limited only for the RBC production and also limited for your production of your embryonic hemoglobin. But here in this hepatic phase, what you are producing here are other blood cells, not only for the RBC, but even your granulocytes, your platelets, and even your lymphocytes. Another thing, you are producing also here your fetal hemoglobin. This is different from your embryonic hemoglobin. Your fetal hemoglobin includes the following. Hemoglobin F, F is for the fetal. So, fetal means to say baby. Um, hemoglobin F is made up of 2 alpha and 2 gamma globin chain. Hemoglobin A is for the adult, only although this one is adult ang tawag, but then again, as early as your young age, you are already producing this hemoglobin A. So we have hemoglobin A1, it's made up 2 alpha, 2 beta globin chain. Hemoglobin A2 is made up of 2 alpha and 2 delta globin chain. Okay, the last phase of your hematopoiesis, we have your... Uh, medullary or your myeloid phase. Okay, your medullary or your myeloid phase is involved here the blood cell production with your bone marrow as your main site of your blood cell production. So, it starts on the fifth month and after birth, okay, pag na panganak na tayo, your bone marrow is still your chief site of your blood cell production. Okay, with the help of your some secondary lymphoid organ for the maturation of your uh, different blood cells. Okay, then we have the normal myeloid erythroid ratio. That's 2 is to 1, 4 is to 1, with an average of 3 is to 1. Okay, then we have here your marrow cellularity. We're talking about your bone marrow. So your bone marrow um, compartment is basically made up of your uh, marrow space plus your hematopoietic cells at meron din siyang part ng fetal or I mean fat cell or your yellow marrow. Okay, for the adult, 10 to 50% of your uh, bone marrow is made up of the fetal or the fat cell or your yellow bone marrow and 40 60% of that is made up of your hematopoietic cells responsible here for the production of your blood cells. Okay, but if you are still young, less than 2 years old, so majority of your marrow is made up of the red bone marrow. In the red bone marrow, it is where your blood cell production takes place. Okay, so we have here the okay, the blood cell production. So basically that one is um, occurring here in our bone marrow. The bone marrow in our body could be found within all your flat bones in your body. So, we have here your, ang pinaka-flat, most likely yung pinaka-malaki will be your sternum. You could also your sacral crest. You could also have here your ribs. We have your vertebral column and even your mga tibia and ulna and all that one. But sa may flat bones there, you could have your bone marrow on that. Okay, so we have here the summary of the entire hematopoiesis. Okay, so we start here with your multipotential stem cells, also called here as your pluripotential stem cells. Um, this one is acted upon by your growth factors. Growth factors would help your uh, progenitor cells here to eventually differentiate. So for the growth factors, we have your kit ligand, we have your interleukin 1, 
interleukin 3. Another one, you have your interleukin 6. Further, this one is acted upon by interleukin 7, which divide your multipotential stem cells into your common lymphoid progenitor. And the other one is your common myeloid progenitor. Okay, so we'll discuss each of this one. Kung ano mga cells dito ang maproproduce and kung ano mga cells dito, mga blood cells natin maproproduce dito. Here naman, your multipotential stem cell is acted upon aside from your kit lichen, interleukin 1, interleukin 3, interleukin 6. You just be needing here your granulocyte, granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor in order for that to differentiate to become your common myeloid uh, cell lines. Okay, then we have also here your, okay, the earlier authors actually try to refer your multipotential stem cells to your CFU spleen or colony forming unit spleen and identify today here as colony forming unit granulocyte, erythrocyte, monocyte, megakaryocytes. Okay, so we will now discuss or we will just have some overview of your blood cell production. Let's start here with your common lymphoid progenitor. So again, common lymphoid progenitor here in order for that to give rise to your differences under that cell lines. Okay, so we have four cells here under your common lymphoid, so we have your dendritic cell, your T lymphocyte, your B lymphocyte, and we have your NK, natural killer. Again, this one is acted upon by, again, by your interleukin 7. So, kailangan nyo interleukin 7. That would eventually help you differentiate your common lymphoid progenitor to your dendritic cells and eventually giving rise to your pre-T lymphocyte, lymphoblast, and we have your T lymphocyte. This is your mature cell already. Then we have your uh, B lymphocyte. We have your pre-B lymphocyte, lymphoblast, B lymphocyte, and we have your plasma cells. B lymphocyte could differentiate to become your plasma cells, which is your antibody-forming cell. Another one arises here from your common lymphoid progenitor would be your NK or your natural, natural killer. Okay, now we go to the, the next line. We have here the common myeloid progenitor. Okay, there are many cells here primarily belonging to your common myeloid progenitor. So, your, from your common myeloid progenitor, this one is acted upon by your growth factors. The first one, we have interleukin 3. Another one, granulocyte, monocyte colony stimulating factor, eventually that will give rise to your colony forming unit, granulocyte monocyte. Another one, this is acted upon by the leukin 3 and 5 that become your colony forming unit, eosinophil, that's your eosinophil, and we have also your basophil. And then your common myeloid progenitor acted upon by your growth, fac growth factor in interleukin 3 that give rise to your colony forming unit, megakaryocyte erythrocyte. So there are three colony forming units here in your under your common myeloid progenitor. Colony forming unit, GM granulocyte monocyte, colony forming unit, eosinophil, basophil, and colony forming unit, megakaryocyte erythrocyte. Okay, we start here with your colony forming unit, granulocyte monocyte. If your colony forming unit, granulocyte megakaryocyte, is acted upon by your growth factor, na granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Again, if your colony forming unit, granulocyte monocyte, is acted upon by the growth factor, granulocyte colony simulating factor that give rise to your myeloblast, promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, your band, and we have your segmentor neutrophil. So this is for the production of your neutrophil. 
But if your colony forming unit, granulocyte monocyte, is acted upon by the growth factor in a monocyte colony simulating factor, it gives rise to your monocyte. Okay, so we have your monoblast, pro-monocyte, and we have your monocyte. Again, if your coliforming unit, granulocyte, monocyte, is acted upon by the growth factor, granulocyte, colony, simulating factor, ang mapaproduce natin is your neutrophil. But if your coliforming unit, granulocyte, monocyte, is acted upon by the growth factor, na monocyte, colony, simulating factor, ang mapaproduce natin is your monocyte. Then we go to your coliforming unit, eosinophil, basophil. Same sila ng stages ng ating uh, neutrophil kasi pareho silang granulocyte nitong tatlo. Neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. So again, the earliest stage, we have your myeloblast, pro-myelocyte, myelocyte, meta-myelocyte, your band, and segmenter that could either be your eosinophil and your basophil. And the third colony uh, forming unit, we have colony forming unit megakaryocyte and the colony forming unit megakaryocyte erythrocyte. So megakaryocyte, if that one is acted upon by the growth factor in the form of your hormone TPO, TPO stands for your thrombopoietin. Okay, that give rise to your megakaryocytes. We have your megakaryoblast. Pro megakaryocyte, megakaryocyte, and finally you have your platelets. On the other hand, if your colony forming unit megakaryocyte erythrocyte is acted upon by your hormone erythropoietin, that give rise here to your burst forming unit erythrocyte, colony forming unit erythrocyte. Probably blast, and you have your RBC. Okay, as your mature cell for that. Okay, so that's the entire common myeloid progenitor. So, ang mga cells natin, we try to arise here from the common myeloid progenitors includes your neutrophil, your monocyte, eosinophil, basophil, your platelets, and your RBC. All the rest, lymphocyte ay nasa common lymphoid progenitor ito. For our discussion today, since ang prelim natin RBC lang, so ito lang pinakaano natin. Actually, dito tayo mag-focus ngayon. So I'm just showing here you, I'm just showing here kung paano na produce kung saan galing ang mga cells natin. Okay, but for this topic, we'll be discussing this one dito. Okay, then we have here the two theories here for the blast formation. First one, we have here your uh, monophyletic theory or your uni unitarian theory. So your monophyletic theory or your unitarian theory, believing here that there, all the blood cells uh, came from one stem cells. So ang tinatawag na one stem cell here, we have your multipotential stem cells which eventually giving rise to all your blood cells here, even with your common lymphoid of progenitor, or we have also your common myeloid progenitor. The second one theory here is your polyphyletic or dualistic theory, stating here that, or believing here that, yours, all the blood cells arises here from different stem cells, or they have a different cell compartments. Okay, now we go to the maturation time, and we have also here the survival time of the different blood cells or body. So, when we speak about the maturation time, so the maturation time is the time here um, from your stem cells up to the time it tries to mature. So, that's from the time where your blood cells here in the bone marrow until the time they are released to your peripheral circulation because they are already mature. Your survival time also includes here after the maturation up to their tissue phase. For example, tissue phase, just in the case of your granulocyte, for example, your WBC, uh, after they are released in the peripheral circulation, some of them are destined here to enter your tissues. And to speak about the survival time also, that simply 
pertains to their uh, lifespan. Okay, first one for the RBC. The RBC would have here the maturation time of 3 to 5 days and would have here the lifespan of 120 days. For your granulocyte, that would have here a maturation time of 5 to 6 days and we have also the survival time up to 9 to 10 days. Before the monocyte would have here the lifespan of uh, maturation time of 5 to 6 days and months to years survival time. And for the lymphocytes, would have your variable maturation time and survival time of months to years. Platelets would have 4 to 5 days maturation time. And we have here the survival of uh, with a lifespan of 10 days on. Okay, so we discussed the erythropoiesis with our RBC production. So again, you're from your common, uh, common myeloid progenitor that is acted upon by the interleukin-3. Okay, that's um, granulocyte monocyte coenzymating factor that eventually become your CFU megakaryocyte erythrocyte, di ba yung kanina? Once you're called your colony forming unit, megakaryocyte erythrocyte is acted upon here by your hormones, it become the first the first um, colony here under your erythrocyte, we have your burst forming unit. BFU erythroid. So the breast forming unit erythroid is actually the first identifiable colony under your RBC series or for the RBC production. It is characterized here by the cluster of grapes na colony with highly with a brightly colored hemoglobin. Okay, this one is uh, acted upon by the following growth factors. We have the leukin 3, your thrombopoietin your kit ligand, and we have your granulocyte monocyte colony simulating factor. Your burst forming unit, erythroid, would have a less receptor for the e, for your erythropoietin. And therefore, hindi siya masyado um, kailangan, hindi, 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 hindi niya masyado kailangan ang erythropoietin for that to differentiate to the next stage. But the next stage is your colony forming unit, erythroid. Colony forming unit, erythroid here would have a high a receptor for the EPO. So therefore, it tried to differentiate to the first RBC series na Robriblas. If your colony forming unit erythroid is acted upon by the EPO or your erythropoietin. Your erythropoietin is a hormone produced primarily by our kidney and our liver. So the stimulus for the production of your EPO in order to simulate here your colony forming unit erythroid para magproduce ng Robriblas it eventually maging RBC natin would be oxygen tension. So, oxygen tension, pag mataas ang oxygen tension, like in a case of uh, anemia, so anemic in patient, high oxygen tension, it will trigger your EPO to be released from your kidney para mag-produce siya ng RBC to compensate kasi anemic in patient natin. Okay, oxygen tension, high oxygen tension for that. In order for that, then, to result here for your RBC production. Okay, before we go with the uh, erythropoiesis, so we have here the general pattern for your maturation of your cells. So, these are the pattern or what would be the changes here as your cell try to mature. The first one, we have here the size. So, as your cell mature, the size of your cell here decreases. Mean to say, ang young cell natin ay malaki ang size, paliit ang paliit, mean to say that's already mature. So, how about the cytoplasm of the cell here? So, for the cytoplasm here, the basophilia or the blue color ng cytoplasm niya nagiging from your as basophilic nagiging acidophilic. From the blue na color nagiging uh, pink ang color natin. Uh, it's because here, as your cell try to mature, the RNA try to decrease which has affinity for basic dye. Kaya, young cell with a blue na color but as your cell try to mature here, then the RNA try to decrease. Ang DNA nag-increase, which has affinity for acidic dye, and therefore, nag-change ang color ng cytoplasm natin from the blue magiging pink or gray. Pink, most likely pink na color. Another one, in your WBC here for their cytoplasm, as you try to mature, nagkakaroon sila ng granules. So, we have the primary and secondary granules for that. Okay, for the nucleus, ano nangyayari sa nucleus? Okay, sa cell mature here for the nucleus, 
in the case of your granulocyte, eosinophil, basophil, eosinophil, ang kanilang nucleus here at try to mature, nagsisegment or naglo-lobulate. So, pag mature pa lang siya, ganyan siya. Pero pag, na, pag immature pa lang siya, usually circular ang kanilang nucleus. Pero pag mature, nagiging ganyan, may mga segmentation na siya. Okay, nagsisegment or lobulate. How about for the RBC? Ano nangyari sa nucleus ng RBC natin as try to mature? As try to mature, ang nucleus ng RBC natin lumiliit and until na nawawala ang kanilang nucleus. And therefore, mature RBC is anucleated. Walang nucleus. Nucleoli, on the other hand, nucleoli, on the other hand, also decreases as the, ter, as the cell mature. Okay, we have here the nuclear chromatin pattern. This is the most important criteria uh, for the estimation of the cell age. We do not rely most likely to the size or even to the color of your cells here for you consider that one as young or mature. But you need to rely on the nuclear chromatin pattern for you to say that the cell is mature already or not. Ano nangyayari sa nuclear chromatin pattern? So, the young cell, the nuclear chromatin pattern is described here as fine, delicate. As it's try to mature, nagiging coarser, nagiging clump ang kanilang nuclear chromatin. Okay, now we discuss your RBC series. So, we have here the nomenclature for the RBC series. Pwede siyang Grobri series, pwede siyang normoblast, it could also be erythroblast. Um, pareha-pareho lang to. So, depende sa gamit mo, kanong gusto mo gamitin. But you need to be very consistent kung ito ang naming na gagamitin mo or ito or ito. Like for example, in the Rubri Blast series, in the Rubri series, the first stage for your RBC would be the Rubri Blast. Okay, that's equivalent for the pro-normal blast in the normal blast and pro erythroblast if itong gagamitin mo na pangalan. Then we have here, so for the Ruby Blast, we have, for the Ruby series, we have Ruby Blast, Pro Ruby Site, Ruby Site, Meta Ruby Site, Reticular Site, and we have your RBC or Retro Site. For the Normal Blast, that's your Pro Normal Blast equivalent to your Ruby Blast, Basophilic Normal Blast equivalent to your Pro Ruby Site here, and Polychromatophilic Normal Blast is equivalent to your Ruby Site Metarobicide is equivalent to your autochromatic, orthochromatophilic, or acidophilic normoblast. Particular site is equivalent here to your polychromatophilic normocyte. Ito normocyte, ito ay normoblast. Magkaiba sila, but they are, ay wait lang, ito pala. Polychromatophilic normoblast. Ang reticulocyte natin for things are polychromatophilic normocyte. Okay, that's your erythrocyte. So, dito ulit, sa erythroblast, okay, we have your pro-erythroblast, basophilic erythroblast, polychromatophilic erythroblast, orthochromatic, orthochromatophilic, acidophilic, or acidophilic erythroblast. Reticulocyte is equivalent to your polychromatophilic erythrocyte. Ito kanina, polychromatophilic erythroblast. Reticulocyte for things to your polychromatophilic erythrocyte. Then we have your erythrocyte for that. Okay, now we go to your erythropoiesis or the RBC series. I'll be using the name Narobri series. The first cell stage here. Again, this is the first cell stage after your colony forming unit erythroid. You start with your burst forming unit erythroid, colony forming unit erythroid. Then, if your colony forming unit erythroid is acted upon by your EPO erythropoid, then it becomes your rubri, rubri blast. For the rubri blast, measure here 14 to 20 micrometer in diameter with a nucleocytoplasm ratio. Of 8 is the 1, so 8 is your nucleus, 1 is the cytoplasm here, so medyo malaki ang kanilang nucleus compared with the cytoplasm na space. It's also characterized with the presence of 1 to 2 nuclei. The cytoplasm is blue kasi again, this is uh, immature na cell natin. 
Okay, then we have nuclear chromatin pattern pag yang ulit. Okay, you are expecting this one would have your fine or delicate na nuclear chromatin pattern. The next stage, we have your prorobricide. Other name for your prorobricide is your basophilic normoblast or your basophilic erythroblast. We have here the size measure um, 12 to 17 micrometer in diameter. Nucleocytoplasm ratio of 6 is to 1. Medyo lumiit ng kanilang nucleus. And we have also that uh, the absence of the nucleoli. And of course, here the cytoplasm is still blue for that. Then we have here next, we have the rubricite. Again, the rubricite is your polychromatophilic um, normoblast or your polychromatophilic erythroblast. Rubricite. Again, measure 10 to 15 micrometer in diameter. Nucleocytoplasm ratio is 4 is to 1. The cytoplasm here become pink-gray. Okay, the pink-gray, the change from the blue to the pink here is eventually because of your hemoglobin synthesis. Dito ka mag-start. So, rubricide stage is where your hemoglobin synthesis starts. Okay, therefore, what you have here is the change in the... Color the cytoplasm from the usual blue nagiging pink-gray. On the next stage, we have your metagrobricide. Other name for that is your orthochromic um, normoblast or acidophilic normoblast. Pag nasa erythroblast series tayo sa uh, orthochromic, orthochromatophilic, erythroblast or your acidophilic na erythroblast. So, meta or simply your meta rubricide, so the size of the 7 to 12 micrometer in diameter, nucleocytoplasm ratio is 2 is to 1. So, my nucleus pa siya. And we describe the nucleus here, a pycnotic nucleus. Pycnotic here means to say this one is dark, structureless nucleus found in a cytoplasm. Okay, then the cytoplasm remains pink. And again, this is the last stage of your RBC having a nucleus. And at the same time, this is also the first stage of your RBC series that is being released to your peripheral circulation. So, mean to say, mga ito ay nasa bone marrow pa lang. Your metahorobicide could eventually be already released to your peripheral circulation. Since my nucleus siya, we sometimes able to uh, identify the presence of this metarobicide in our peripheral circulation, peripheral blood, pag nag extract tayo ng blood. So, that's the RBC na my nucleus. And therefore, you, ref you refer that one to your NRBC or nucleated RBC. Again, this is the last stage with the nucleus. Okay, the next stage, we have your reticulocyte. Other name for that is your polychromatophilic normocyte or polychromatophilic erythrocyte. So reticulocyte is identified here by having that uh, 2 to 4 granulofilamentous filament having fine reticulum of the RNA containing here the Golgi apparatus and the remnants of the ribosomes. And this fine reticulum of the RNA can be visualized by your supravital stain. So, provider stain are a type of special stain where we're able to stain the cells here even if that one is in the living state. So, kahit buhay pang cell natin, pwede niya i-take up itong mga supervital stain. By principle kasi, ang stain natin, tinitake up ng mga cells natin pag patay na sila. But, in the case of your reticulous site, it's still alive, but still could able to take up the stain. And that's your supervital stain. So, provider stain here includes your methylene blue, your new methylene blue. You could also have your brilliant cresyl blue. And what's other thing about your reticulocyte? Again, this is the last stage capable of your hemoglobin synthesis. Again, next start tayo with your hemoglobin synthesis in your rubricite. Magi end tayo sa hemoglobin synthesis natin with your reticulocyte. I mean to say the next stage, which is your erythrocyte, okay, uh, wala na siyang, he is not, is no longer capable already of your hemoglobin synthesis. Okay, for your erythrocyte, measure 6 to 8 micrometer in diameter. That one is biconcave, this shape. 
will have your salmon and pink na color ng cytoplasm. At the same time, wala siyang nucleus. Again, for the nucleus, nag-start ka dito sa rubriblast hanggang sa metarubricite. Ang reticulocytes natin, sorry, ang reticulocytes natin, ito, wala na siyang nucleus. What more pang mature RBC natin, eventually wala na rin siyang nucleus. Another one, we have your mitosis. Okay, the one capable mitosis, so rubriblast, Hanggang rubricite lang ang mitosis natin. So, metarubricite is no longer capable of mitosis. Okay, so we have here the summary of that. So, mitosis here, the one capable only of mitosis for starting from your rubriblast only after up to your rubricite stage. Then, the next stage, your metarubricite is no longer capable of your mitosis or cell division. Hemoglobin synthesis here start with your rubricite and end up in your reticulocytes. And therefore, your mature RBC is no longer capable of your hemoglobin synthesis. Okay, the following stages here would have the presence of the nucleus to so start with the rubricite, a rubriblast, up to your metarubricite. So therefore, your reticulocyte don't have a nucleus. Okay, from your maturation here, from your rubriblast, I mean rubriblast, sorry, rubriblast to your reticulocyte takes here approximately 3 to 5 days. And eventually, um, conversion of your reticulocytes here to become mature RBC takes 48 to 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so, I sorry. Okay, Again, maturation of your rubriblast to your rubricite takes 3 to 4 days. And uh, maturation here of your reticulocyte to become your mature RBC takes here 1 to 1.5 days or 24 to 48 hours. Okay, one rubriblast would eventually could give rise here to 16 mature RBC. And we have here the term erethron. Erethron here refers to the total population of your RBC precursors. Precursors are found in your bone marrow and mature RBC found in your peripheral circulation. All those belonging to your RBC series are, you call that one as your erythron. Okay, so thank you.